A remarkable thing happened at the church where a small group of people gathered inside. Several priests stood in front of the altar while the people knelt near one of them. The priest announced the results for Klaus Noldor loudly and calmly. He mentioned that this person had a skill called automation. The audience started whispering as they had never heard of this skill before in their lives. Claus, who was 15 years old, jumped from his knees when the priest spoke about how rare automation was. The knights watching the ceremony said they must recruit him into the Metropolitan Knights Order for sure. A group of people involved in an argument said that the man should join their guild. Claus, feeling excited, looked at his hands and thought so, even though in reality, he had many unique skills. There was a possibility that it would be an incredibly powerful skill. Claus looked up at the sky and thought about the possibility of becoming a celebrity among adventurers. Dreams and hopes flooded the man's mind. After a while, the wind howled in the misty forest. Standing alone in the forest, he remembered that he had once thought like that. After three full years, he still hadn't achieved anything. He was now 18 years old, and his level was ranked 10. He decided to explain what automation was at the first level of his skill. It helped with automatic retrieval, a chance to return home automatically from the dungeon, and so on. This ability allowed him to do it for the second time. His skill level is automatic. It allows him to move automatically between country locations. This function only means that when he realizes it, he is already at his destination. But that's all that Claus screams that it's been over two years, and he's still a low-level beginner adventurer. He clenches his fists while thinking that if this continues, he will lose easily. His patience. Many people from the guild treat him poorly and call him useless. They laugh at Claus's skills and abilities, saying that he is incapable of anything. They tell him that he must surrender his life like that. One of the adventurers tells him bluntly about it. People like him are very empty. They ask what he can say. He must change his direction, but his actions will not be stopped by anyone. He says cruel words like that sincerely hurt Claus. The poor man cries, but he will not give up. Claus is fighting a goblin in the forest. Afterward, the man manages to defeat the little goblin. He reaches their boss, Hobgoblin. He holds a small dagger in front of him, his breath panting as he says he will finish off the monster here and now. He shouts that it's the first time he's gone on a solo cleansing. He's been an adventurer for three years. During these three years, he has worked hard to become better. The male adventurer runs towards the monster, which in turn also raises its staff and prepares to face a heavy attack. Claus runs forward and injures the goblin's arm. Then he quickly spins his weapon in his hand to deliver another blow. In an instant, he turns and cleaves the monster. The goblin's body fell lifeless behind Claus as he calmly stood trying to catch his breath. He was very surprised by what had happened, being able to kill the hobgoblin. After finally catching his breath, he walked closer to the monster's body. He removed the upper muscle part of the goblin and took out the goblin's magic stone from its chest. He lifted his sword again, saying that this stone was much bigger than a usual goblin. After closing in, he quickly attacked the stone with his blade, shattering it easily. The goblin's soul rose from it. At the same time, Claus's statistics began to increase. He was able to reach level 11 right after that. He smiled a bit awkwardly took a deep breath, and said he was finally pumped. He started thinking that level 10 was the maximum level he could achieve because he had been stuck at this level for too long. He checked his statistics and believed that his companions had reached level 50 in three years. He said it was useless to envy others' lives. Claus smiled happily and said that he finally reached his third level skill. He clicked it and prayed that it would be useful. At that moment, he thought about all the people who said bad things about him because of his abilities, calling both the men and their skills useless, thinking about this mockery. At this moment, he can only pray that it will turn out to be something useful. Then clicks on the upgrade, and then he sees that at the third level, this skill gives him the opportunity to automatically gather resources. Seeing this, he falls to the ground in despair. He can't believe that this is just an automatic resource gathering meeting. He doesn't understand how this could all be happening. The pirates start laughing hysterically. Right now, he says that expectations only bring bitterness, and people from the past cleverly tell him what he expected for automatic healing or rocking. 
but he just needs to calm down and pick some grass. He decides that he has enough for today. The person uses the automatic skill of teleportation, and a timer appears in front of him. In the end, he is already at the entrance of the annoyed Claus house. He goes to the house and announces his arrival at that time. At that moment, he is welcomed by the sweet little sister named Liz. The girl asks why he is back so late because time has already passed. Claus smiles tiredly and then apologizes to the girl. He tells her that he has been on a long climb. After checking her from head to toe, the girl screams and says that she is all dirty again. She starts pushing him inside and leads him into the house. She says he needs to take a shower before dinner and preferably soon. Claus asks her not to push too hard. The girl says it doesn't matter how she does it. She does it very well anyway. Claus thanks her for those words. After a while, the girl arranges her table and says they have stale black bread for dinner today, as well as Chinese cabbage soup and bacon. The man came out of there, took a shower, and thanked Liz for her efforts. He said he would join her soon after his hair was dry. The girl dragged him over and sat him down at the table, telling him to go eat now. He took his towel and said he would dry his head himself. He did it quickly, and Claus quickly screamed in pain and asked if he could do it himself. The girl said the broth had to be eaten first when it was cold, so he shouldn't be naughty and eat in silence. He immediately said that when he ate, his mood would disappear. Claus was a little surprised after that, and he smiled awkwardly. The man asked if it was really obvious from him. Liz said it was normal, and then asked who he thought he was. He said he was Liz's younger sister. Liz asked anxiously if something was wrong at work again. Claus quietly agreed with her suggestion. The girl quickly understood everything, and asked if this meant it was all about her skills again. The man looked at the floor and agreed with her again. After that, he awkwardly apologized to Liz, not quite understanding what Claus could apologize to her for. He asked him about it, and the man said he was making too little money because of him, and he was having a hard time. He shouted that his father never returned from the mission and his stupidity. The parents who brought her to their place have also disappeared somewhere. She is obligated to earn money for both of them, but she can't hear it. Liz, this sad girl, hugged her close, stopping her monologue tightly. The man was surprised, asking what she was doing. Liz asked if it was easier for him when she hugged him. The man blushed and said that it didn't happen, and siblings shouldn't feel better touching. Liz's chest asked if she was confusing something. She said she was still a child, but she already had to do the job. She stated that she clearly had a harder time than she said. That's why she shouldn't talk like that again. She asked if he wanted to listen to her in this matter. Claus awkwardly turned to her and tried to say something, but she didn't let him do it. Liz cut him off and said it needed to stop worrying too much about his skills because it wasn't very useful. Initially, he stared at her and said it would be a while before she turned 15 and she would be able to get her skills. He stated that if everything went well, she would take care of herself. She kissed his forehead and told him that they had to live like this until then. After that, she awkwardly moved away from him, shocked. Close looked towards the girl who clearly didn't feel ashamed for this action. She jumped and ran out of the room. Claus asked in amazement where she went because she was still a child herself in response. Liz exclaimed she had already gone to sleep. Only Claus could stare at her. The girl turned around and said that she would finally say it was enough for her that she was fair to go home. She smiled. Claus struggled to find a response after his sister left, but he smiled and took a deep breath. He felt much better and decided that he would do his best the next day. Little did he know that his unique skill of making everyone laugh would soon come in handy. That night, he was still unaware of the true value of his third-tier automation skill. Automatically, he would surely achieve his goals. This was the best feature of automation. The man stood at the resource-gathering location, also known as the Toxic Swamp, waiting for something. The next day, he returned to the place and was amazed by what he found. There was a small potion on the ground where he had left something yesterday. Claus asked how this was possible. He picked up the grass in his hand and asked how it was doing today. 
He took on the task of collecting the antidote potion ingredients and came to this place. He thought it was as gloomy as usual. He activated his skill and said he doubted it would be useful, but he decided to try it anyway. Activating the automatic assembly of grass, he saw many resources that could be collected in front of him. Seeing thousands of names in front of him, the man couldn't believe his eyes. He didn't understand if all these resources were available for collection. Claus gently pressed his antidote system. The man asked how many resources he needed to gather. He decided to input 30 even units and was surprised when the system showed it would only take four minutes to do so. Claus chuckled nervously, thinking that in this case, one unit would be collected every 10 seconds. After that, Claus started the timer. Time passed quickly, and when he returned, he was quite surprised by the amount of grass in front of him. He wondered if this was just a joke on him. Claus quickly rushed to the system, deciding it would be a good idea to look for something rarer than the usual herb. His gaze fell on petrified grass. The system showed the collection time at the end, and this type of vegetation was already in the hands of the man who was struck. He exclaimed that the petrified herb was out of reach. On average, it was 50 times more expensive than the usual herb. After completing this, he decided to also gather 10 pieces of macho grass. Once the resource collection time was over, this herb was also in front of Claus, who smiled greedily. The man decided to see how long it would take to gather the rarest grass, Dragon Herb's legendary class, which you could only obtain throughout the castle. He chose one of the things and saw that the harvest time was 127 hours, which definitely surprised him as it would take more than five days. Claus laughed and said there was no need to wonder because there was no place where this grass could grow. He was wondering where his growth could end up in five days. All of a sudden, he abruptly stopped talking. Claus became aware that in just five days, he would have the opportunity to obtain dragon nails from that mythical plant. At least, that's what his expertise led him to believe. Without wasting any time, he swiftly turned around and pondered over his options in this situation. Claus needed to determine the approximate location of the rare item nearby. That's why he decided to venture to another spot to gather resources, which was famously known as the Gorge of Wales. Despite wearing a gas mask to protect himself, Claus was still resistant to the poison it emitted. The mask was designed to last for hours and could accommodate two people. Letting out a sigh, Claus acknowledged that he had arrived at his destination. The place was quite unpopular and heavily contaminated with potent poison. However, Claus was confident that he would find the grass he needed in this treacherous gorge. Although the price for each piece was exorbitant, Claus knew that obtaining a poison antidote potion for just one silver was a small price to pay compared to the value of the grass. In the system, Claus opted for a mandragora, considering its weight. Without a doubt, this legendary potion was extremely rare, and the Mandragora activated a unique skill. Suddenly, the timer started ticking faster and faster until Claus woke up. As he opened his eyes, he found a Sprout Mandragora in his hand. Excitedly, he raised it up, thinking of Liz. However, his joy turned to fear when he saw a terrifying monster standing behind him. When Claus shouted in joy about victory, he heard something emerge behind him. After that, both of his detection skills were activated. Claus turned around and was surprised to notice a large fang behind him. The man screamed loudly and fell back in front of Claus. The large and hungry monster stood in Class A. The rock lizard monster struck the place where the man had just flown back from. The desperate man started crying as he was trapped unable to believe that he had encountered the rock lizard there. Everything seemed like a joke because this location was very low. He truly did not understand exactly how the monster in Class A could be there. Tears flowed down his cheeks as he decided that it was all over for him. Memories of his little sister began to appear in front of him. He apologized to her, but suddenly he did not understand at all what he was thinking. He did not understand how he could think of leaving her alone. He had promised her that he would come back, and Claus clearly decided that he would return. He did not care that he did not even have a chance to win. He would still go back home where Liz, his beloved, was waiting for him.
Claus raised the dagger and suddenly a mandragora grew in front of him. The rock lizard turned away from him, observing this behavior. Claus also noticed it, holding the mandragora in front of him. The man pulled the plant even further. When the stone lizard suddenly turned, holding its head and understanding what could happen, it assumed that when it pulled out the plant from its native soil, the lizard screamed loudly, attracting the attention of the gecko and quickly realizing that it hurt it. Because of the mandragora's scream, the lizard lost points in its health during the automatic shutdown. It couldn't see or hear anything, so it lifted its sword and attacked with a quick thrust. It pounced on the monster that was curled up on the ground, saying that everything would end here, only to fight claws in battle. The stone lizard, humiliated by the whole world, the owner of one of the most useless skills, claws, returned home with its load. It decided that whoever treated it badly would be held accountable for it. When Claus returned home, his younger sister Liz was hanging clothes to dry. When she saw him, the happy girl smiled widely and greeted him. Everything was very calm in the Adventurer Guild, as someone was cleaning before the opening, and someone was still trying to wake up among those who were still awake, was the Guild's secretary named Tareen. The girl smiled sweetly, straightened her body, and said it was time to work. She went back to her place further inside. The tired girls didn't have much initiative, so they agreed with Tareen, who was not satisfied with such an answer. The girl turned towards them and said that the secretary was the face of the guild and they should wake up as soon as possible. The girls said they couldn't get enough sleep at all, because since yesterday's overtime. The second girl supported her friend Tareen, saying that this should not be done because secretaries should always be as graceful as white swans. According to her, they should do it with a smile and not show their exhaustion. The girls exclaimed that it was all because among them there was an adventurer behind them. The secretaries complained about it. They had overwhelmed them overall with a lot of work. They complained that the adventurer did not show up in the guild for a full week, and then brought a lot of different loot. They said if Tareen knew how long it took to finish everything, set the price, and then send it. Tareen took a deep breath and said that whatever it was, they had to do it at least take a bath. Suddenly, one of the girls remembered and said that she hadn't seen Tareen stall for a while. The secretaries asked what she was talking about. The second girl supported her friend and said that she hadn't shown up for a few days. They said she was a veteran who was still low level. Adventurer Tareen guessed she was talking about Claus. He agreed that she had been gone for a long time. At the same time, someone entered the guild hall and greeted loudly. It was Claus Noldor with the mountains behind him. The man smiled broadly. This time he had successfully reached level 19 when the secretaries saw Claus. They were shocked by this, especially because many of the girls he had brought were already crying, thinking about what was happening to them again. It was unplanned, but they didn't understand where he got the monster's head from in the first place. They were afraid to go to another place at night without sleep. Currently, Tareen greeted Claus with a sweet smile and said that he came early enough today. Tareen noticed the girl's surprised actions and the secretary said that Claus had been missing several times a day, and they had started to worry. He asked where he was. Claus said that first he went to the poisonous swamp and then to the Valley of Lamentation. Tareen wondered what they should do because almost everything was unplanned, and the unexpected victims were starting to apologize to the girls. They were surprised because Tareen didn't even flinch. They thought he sounded different when he spoke to the mirror. The second girl said that there was nothing like that and pointed to Tareen's trembling legs. The girl approached him and asked if it was really the head of a stone lizard. He said it was a rare production in the world and he wanted to keep it for himself or give it to a specialist for processing. They realized that it was reflected in his legs. Tareen mostly said that what mattered to him was Claus returning safely. The man awkwardly apologized to him and then started rummaging through the bag that Claus said was something different. From the bag, he took out a small mandragora root, which was valuable material at the time. The ground cracked under Tareen's feet, surprising Claus. Tareen frowned and then turned sharply towards the man and told him to come inside with him. Claus asked fearfully why it was necessary. The girl forcefully dragged him closer, and then the man asked if she had done it wrong. Tareen said that he would face the consequences now, 
so he shouldn't have fought against it and should follow calmly. After that, the door to this room slammed shut. After a while, they entered the director's office. There was someone holding a small badge with information about Claus Noldor, who was a Class D adventurer. It was Mrs. Salazar, the guild leader, an old woman sitting calmly and smiling. She said that Claus realized that he shouldn't be afraid because he wasn't brought there to be told anything at all. She lifted her teacup and said that it was quite the opposite, and she would praise him for his successful work as an adventurer. She also said that there was room for doubt in all of this. After her words, they put them into the mandragora on the table that the woman from the guild brought. She said that this plant was not easy to find, so she wondered where she could get it right away. Both Tareen and Madame Salazar seemed cautious, and the atmosphere in the room was tense. In response to this question, Claus smiled widely and said that he had accidentally found it in the Valley of Lamentation. The two girls looked at him with enthusiastic disbelief and a smile on their lips. After a while, they could still go out onto the street, where he happily raised his hand mentally, turned to Liz, and said that he had done it successfully, and he didn't even lie. He also managed to hide his involvement and his skills in this matter. He realized that he seemed very worried, but there was nothing to worry about. However, there was something else as he looked back at Liz while contemplating the many things he had gained, but not all that Mrs. Salazar said was true. There was still a maximum value margin of around 250 gold coins. Claus couldn't believe these numbers. The teacher's union said that was the maximum value, but in reality, it was around 65 coins wholesale. Even as a guild, they didn't lead transactions of that magnitude. Madame Salazar asked if Claus agreed to barter. They could offer something equivalent, like equipment or magical stones. In this case, she would receive 13 large teardrops shaped like magical stones, but she only got one from the lizard stone. On average, besides that, Claus happily declared that she was able to level up. Everything was in front of her. Madame Salazar watched from his office window as Claus walked out of the guild building joyfully. He didn't understand anything at all. He said that until yesterday, Claus was considered completely incompetent. But today, she brought them an S-class material. She also noted that he was able to do it alone against a Class B monster, a lizard stone. She asked if Claus was really just a D-class venturer. She turned to Tareen, who was listening intently. The woman said that they needed to closely monitor Claus, stating that she would either become a very important figure or everything would remain the same as before. At this moment, they had to think about it. After a while, Claus was preparing his small equipment again. He adjusted a lantern on his head, which was attached to a protective helmet he had prepared for the beginners. The location, also known as Twilight Mine, was not popular and poor. Claus closed the zipper of his helmet, and said that its automation had already proven its effectiveness in plant growth cases. Now, he decided to try something else at level 27. Claus entered the cave and said that this time he would search for minerals. At that moment, someone was watching him. It was a girl who was a Girl Scout in her hiding place. The Twilight Mine is a giant mine that was dug by the ancient dwarf tribe for its mithril deposit a thousand years ago. Nowadays, it is mainly mined for its glowstone. This time, customers were asked to enter the magical, shining armor cities in the glowing stone houses. They were used almost everywhere, so the small ones were given to children for pocket money. Claus looked up and said there was one thing. After that, he burst into laughter and declared that he got it with a quick hand movement. The man opened the status window and proudly stated that he relied on automation for everything. Claus opened that part with the magical glowing stone inside, cataloging it, and was surprised that he could choose the big ones immediately. He was also surprised by the short collection time, which meant the stones were close to the entrance. Claus said it was easy too. He asked his sister to wait for him and laughed very loudly again, stating that it was time to tear and throw. He said it was about his own whirlwind to mine resources. The Girl Scout silently watched the whole scene, completely covered in dark clothing. She stood at the corner of the cave and watched closely. It bothered her that the claws talked too much for someone traveling alone. After the girl walked away from the busy claws, 
He took off his headscarf and exhaled, thinking that no matter what he did, he couldn't refuse his younger brother. He sighed heavily and wondered why he had to do it for this low-level adventurer. The girl turned to where the claws had been and realized that he was no longer there. She was surprised and wondered where he could have gone in such a short time. Tareen immediately jumped forward and drew her weapon. She ran forward not understanding where she was going because literally now she stood right in front of her. Suddenly she heard something hit the floor. She quickly turned around and saw small rocks on the ground that had fallen from above. She looked up and saw the claws already at the top of the cliff he climbed very fast, not even thinking about stopping. Tareen was truly amazed at how quickly he got there. She didn't understand how he could be there so quickly. Now, without thinking twice, she followed him. The claws wanted to stop the person who had left his field of vision so quickly. Tareen hoped the man wouldn't think he could defeat a medium-level adventurer like her. After that, the girl quickly climbed the slope where the closure had occurred a few moments ago, and she was surprised. She saw something that she clearly couldn't believe. The man jumped from there sideways to the other, as if they were small jumps for another. Claus stopped on one of the slopes holding his whip in his hand. Right now, Tareen could only watch him. The girl was truly amazed by what she had just seen. With her mouth agape, she stood and stared as Claus successfully mined the magical stones. Tareen wondered who this crazy person was, then approached to extract the ore. Soon, the time machine was assembled, and he regained consciousness after the closing. Opening his eyes, he saw in front of him neatly stacked large, glowing magical stones, totaling twenty pieces. He was thrilled to find out that even the minerals were within his reach, and he could safely mine them. Without hesitation, he said that these twenty large, glowing magical stones were for his task, and he needed to collect two hundred of the same. Thinking he might be too naive, but there were many of them in that place. He exclaimed that if he dug a little, he would soon find another stone. He wondered if she had found the entire suggested deposit, thinking that if she was lucky, she might dig up a very large stone like the one she originally assumed she was truly capable of finding what she really wanted. The happy man was holding a very large, magical, glowing stone in one hand and another in the other. The man jumped with joy and shouted his sister's name, saying that he had succeeded and today they might be waiting for a big dinner prize. The woman watching the man wondered why he was shouting again. She didn't understand if he couldn't work in silence. As a result, after a few moments, Claus managed to complete this task, collecting two hundred large stones, five very large ones, and one large magic beam stone. The man sat on the stone. Inside it, he said that he had completed his task momentarily. Claus stated that the skill of automatic resource collection was truly extraordinary. He opened the system and began flipping through it. Besides other minerals such as copper, iron, lead, silver, and gold could be selected for collection. Even a melting stone or magical iron were all available for Claus. He started flipping through the catalog while saying along the way that he could choose any mineral he encountered before he started flipping through the pages below and noticed the minerals that were not there until now. Well, even if the mineral was on the menu, it didn't mean it was easy to understand perfectly. This shows that many top miners need more than 100 hours to be able to gather them. He said it didn't look like he could be as lucky as he was last time by finding a rare mandragora. As soon as Claus said this, he saw something rare in the catalog a ghostly glowing S-class mineral stone that only took half an hour to find. The man was sincerely surprised by such a discovery. The glowing stone had the ability to gather magical power, and therefore it was highly sought after among wizards. The man started screaming with joy because he found what he needed. He shouted that it was another rare material that could be mined. Tareen, who was sitting behind a rock, was quite scared and startled by the loud scream. She tried to figure out what was happening to him. She emerged from behind the rock and started staring at him. At that moment, Claus didn't understand why it was happening. The glowing stones were in such a state, as if they were in a haunted place. These stones were only mined in graves, but Claus decided that it wasn't important to him right now. He kept it, thinking about whether he should take the risk or leave it as it is. The man's main question was whether he understood that there might be such a problem with the Mandragora 
when he woke up afterwards. The end of the skill that he could fulfill was the most dangerous monster he knew he was powerless at the moment. And the last time he almost died, he was very lucky. At that time, he was able to win and come back to life. If the Mandragora didn't do it, he was afraid that it wouldn't stand on the ground at that time. But he also understood that it was worth considering the fact that at that time, his level was much lower compared to now. When he encountered the Stone Lizard, he was at level 11, but now he was already at level 27. Besides the excitement, his anger skill improved and he could buy a new weapon, an effective obsidian dagger against medium-level monsters, thanks to his third-level detection. He could sense the presence of dangerous monsters. He pressed the screen and said he still hadn't tested it. He had one last trick up his sleeve to ramp up automation to the fourth level. The guy kept clenching his fists while fixated on the screen, contemplating whether to go for it or retreat. Despite the hesitation, he ultimately made up his mind. He donned his helmet, convinced he could handle it. With that, he activated the third level of automatic resource collection. Even though he wasn't exactly eager to venture into the treacherous depths of the underground prison, he knew he wouldn't get another chance like this. Tareen stared at Claus in disbelief, unable to fathom what he would do now that he had completed his mission. That's what Claus was pondering at that very moment. But he would soon come to regret it. Suddenly, a piercing scream echoed through the air, warning them to brace for the impending attack as something massive crashed down nearby. Claus and Tareen narrowly evaded the assault right before their eyes. Standing before them was a colossal monster in the form of a terrified male and female skeleton. They could only gaze in terror at the monstrous sight. Without delay, the skeleton lunged at them. In that moment, the anguished cries of the hapless adventurers filled the room as they struggled to comprehend how Claus and Tareen had ended up in such a dire predicament. We need to go back about 30 minutes ago. Claus was unconscious at that time. He used his third automation skill, also known as automatic resource collection skill. As soon as the time setting advanced, closed off. Minutes passed by quickly, and thus half an hour had passed. He was assigned to find the stone as soon as possible. Claus regained consciousness with a little difficulty as he opened his eyes immediately after regaining consciousness. He saw a small, neatly arranged stone on his head. The man looked quite surprised by it, as he was holding a rare S-class item that was slightly crushed. The shining stone in his hand looked like a ghostly mineral, bright and even white, all covered in small specks and convolutions. Seeing the shining S-class stone in his hand, Claus couldn't contain his excitement. He smiled widely and hissed a little. Next, as he jumped high and shouted the name of the mineral ghostly shining stone with joy, he could get it. After landing, he suddenly heard a small cracking sound throughout the floor where he stood, full of human bones and skulls. At the moment of landing, Claus accidentally stepped on one of the bones, breaking it in two. Hearing this, Claus stopped in the same position, his face expression complicated as he suddenly realized that he was in a strange place. He looked around and saw that everything around him was full of remnants of people. The man screamed loudly, revealing his misunderstanding and fear of this place. Terrified, Claus looked up and saw many bookshelves filled with human skulls on all the pirate bookshelves, swaying and assuming that this was an ancient hidden cemetery he had heard could be found in old mines from time to time. The man was holding a shining object like a ghostly stone in his hand, replacing his lantern because it was so big and bright. He sighed and retreated, realizing that the environment clearly wasn't the main question now. The question was where he was and what kind of place the wall he had pierced was, making him tense, especially in a situation like this, an unpleasant place that the man had taken by storm and hung on his shoulder. After that, he immediately raised his hand and opened the window system where he started typing something on the screen. He saw the timer showing six and a half hours. Apparently, Claus had found his first level automation skill, automatic return. He could always return home automatically from the underground prison or from the field. He said that the automatic return skill showed the time spent on the journey home. In other words, if he used the skill, 
he would definitely be able to return to his nearest home. He wondered what he could do when he returned. Automatic return was one option, but he was tormented by the question of what he could do with the shining, ghostly stone. He had already seen a photo of himself sitting in the office right in front of Madame Salazar, with Tareen standing behind them. Both girls were smiling widely and asking where he got everything, except the man couldn't answer because this return happened automatically. Claus couldn't know where he came from or how he went to return. He could see how the girls would laugh nervously. When he said that, he found it somewhere in the twilight jungle. He groaned and said that it was also very impossible to do. Explain all this, not to mention his automatic resource gathering skills. He went forward and said that he was at least glad because the current situation was just creepy. He also thought that this was a burial ground that had accidentally turned into an underground prison. So maybe when he woke up, there would be skeletons and evil spirits around him. He walked forward while holding a glowing stone like a ghost. He said that automation skills were indeed convenient, but it was the right place he was taken to, which was very dangerous, noticing some kind of steps in the claws building, turning at the corner with an apparent interest in holding his stone. It was something unusual for a place like this. Suddenly, when Claus approached this place with his glowing stone, he saw Tareen holding a dagger surrounded by the skull of a human girl, which only made the situation worse. As soon as they realized each other, both of them jumped in fear because they didn't expect to see this at all. Claus immediately jumped away from the girl and shouted if the ghost had jumped in front of him. He shouted again after that when he saw Tareen's face up close and didn't quite understand if the beautiful girl was catching ghosts. Tareen was somewhat confused because of Claus's words. Suddenly, the girl heard a buzzing sound behind her, and a silhouette began to appear behind her, noticing something wrong. Tareen jumped towards Claus, screaming at him to lie down. Right after that, a monster that looked like a skeleton jumped out of the wall behind them. It was definitely a monster. The skull screamed loudly, wearing a neat helmet, and a torn raincoat hung on its body. Hearing the scream, Claus and Tareen were running away from the unpleasant monster. Both adventurers only had fear inside them. Their eyes were surely in a very difficult situation with tears in them. Claus looked back, unable to contain his fear. He screamed loudly, trying to escape as fast as he could with Tareen. They ran as fast as possible, maybe for both of them at the same time a monster was chasing them, its legs wrapped in bandages, shouting something. Tareen, who couldn't understand, asked who he was talking about in response to Claus, who asked what kind of large skeleton was chasing them without stopping. Tareen explained that this monster was different because it was indeed a low-level monster. She said that this skeleton was a medium-level monster, a skeleton knight, an undead creature that inhabited the depths as an underground cemetery guard. Its peculiarity was that its strength varied greatly depending on its equipment. She added that as an addition, this individual who possessed it significantly increased his strength. Tareen, with her abilities, would have difficulty fighting him. Claus thanked her for saving him, and then asked who she was. Tareen turned away sadly from Claus upon hearing this question, not wanting to answer right away. The guy stared at her and noticed something unusual so she couldn't do it. Before Claus saw the girl had leaf-shaped bamboo ears above all, Claus also noticed that she had dark skin. He assumed she was the same age as his younger sister Liz. He asked loudly if she was a dark elf, because Klaus's words hit her face with his fist relentlessly as he ran. His words made her angry, even though Klaus didn't even understand why she was being hit without opening her fist. Tareen told him her name after that, and told him not to call her by her name, continuing and telling him not to dare look at her with such an unpleasant look because it was disgusting. Suddenly, he realized that she wasn't looking at him, so he decided not to look at her to chase the subject. Tareen exclaimed that the skeleton was still chasing them when Claus heard about this. He asked in a fearful voice why this was happening, trying to escape from the monster. Claus asked how scary it was that the monster was still following Tareen at all. The girl's response asked how she knew about it. She wanted to say that she was indeed stalking her, but silenced her and said it was all wrong and she was indeed wrong, suddenly attacking. When he was at the grave, he would say it even if Claus said something, he wouldn't answer. Suddenly, he stopped in the middle of the sentence. 
The adventurers saw that the path they passed through was filled with debris from buildings. Unable to retreat, they could only stare at the ruins in silence. After a while, the monster caught up with the people. He stood right behind Claus, who had swung his big sword with a strong desire to kill. The skeleton began to attack him directly on the head, wearing a small, closed helmet initially used to avoid injuries while mining. Suddenly a loud crash was heard in the room. Claus rolled over on the floor. The man dropped his pickaxe and it rolled with him. As soon as he stopped, he got up, rubbing his sore head and body due to the trauma of falling suddenly. He saw the attack that was initially intended for him was being blocked by Tareen. She held the enemy's big sword with her small sword as best as she could. The girl trembled, holding on to her last bit of strength. Suddenly, she snorted, saying that the monster was very strong, and asked if it was really just an average level that changed to the girl holding it. Tareen suddenly shouted at him, urging him to run away. She told him not to think about her and to run faster because now he had the chance. She said that Claus was a burden, so he had to run away faster. At that moment, a look of anger and helplessness appeared on Claus's face as he couldn't help her. After these words, Claus got up and started running as fast as he could towards the exit. He didn't even look back at Tareen, who was still holding the monster. He ran with his eyes closed, holding the pickaxe in one hand. He understands that in difficult situations, there is no other way out. He says that there is nothing he can do because he is a low-level adventurer and there will be no help from him at that time. The image of his beloved little sister Liz appears in front of him, smiling happily as usual. Suddenly, something happens at Claus's house that makes him think about everything there. His facial expression is complicated and his eyes are empty. Next, he rushes in the opposite direction simultaneously. Tareen is already struggling to stand, holding the sword that saved her. After a few moments, Tareen sees that Claus is behind the monster. The man swings his pickaxe towards the monster, attacking Tareen with quick movements of his weapon. He hits the monster's helmet. A ringing sound is heard in the room. The skeleton's helmet is damaged and bends as Kla hits it with the sharp part of the pickaxe. After a hard hit, the room feels frozen. Tareen still holds her sword and Claus is in the air after the danger attack. Next, the skeleton's head turns towards Klaus, who is very surprised by this. The monster is already full of anger and rage towards Claus, who attacked him from behind with quick movements. The skeleton knight turns to Claus simultaneously, sending Tareen flying with him. A loud thud is heard as they hit Claus, who also sends them flying backwards. Tareen flies back and starts coughing up blood at the same time. The monster skeleton's close-up view makes terrifying sounds. Tareen stares at Claus with a heavy gaze and calls him foolish. Then she asks why he couldn't just run away while lying down. Claus stubbornly states that this would only lead to bad behavior for him. He couldn't just leave a girl who looked like Liz fighting while he was escaping. Claus started to rise from the floor with all the pride he had, stating that he wanted to go home and tell his sister about what he aimed for that skeleton. He said he had to prepare himself with a quick movement of his hand, opening the system. It had become a blow without preparation this time. Claus was already badly injured and paralyzed, so he didn't know what he could achieve. It was a new upgraded automation skill with the help of the magic stone. He knew that no matter what he thought about it, it was too dangerous for him. When the monster was already standing behind Claus, ready to attack, the man managed to activate the fourth level of the automation skill. The automatic return could always automatically bring the user back from the second level of the underground room. One of his skills was automatic movement which could always move the user to a location they had visited at least once before, like the underground prison field and the like. The third level skill was automatic resource collection, which could always automatically collect resources that the user had found at least once. And the fourth level skill was automatic combat. Automatic combat always led the user into battle automatically with opponents they had fought at least once. Claus entered all the necessary data about the opponent into the system, showing him that the time required for the battle was 13 minutes. Claus glanced at the moment and wondered if he would be able to fight for 13 minutes. He was already a level 5 adventurer, but this opponent was a mid-level Terran monster. Trembling, Tareen tried to get up. 
The girl screamed at Claus to escape as fast as possible because it might soon be too late. Grinning heavily, he summoned skeletons to fight. At that moment, he clenched his jaw, making a river-like sound. The man pressed the coveted button, activating the fourth level of automatic battle skills. As soon as his hand touched the activation button, his eyes closed, and the 13-second timer quickly went forward. After that, his whole body fell slowly to the ground, as if Claus had just fallen asleep in that position. Tareen stared at the motionless man on the floor, unable to believe he didn't understand what was happening. The monster turned towards the man in succession to attack him, swinging his sword at Claus. Tareen shouted, asking if he was really asleep. As the monster's sword approached the man's head, he quickly dodged it very smoothly and quickly, almost impossible to see. In an instant, it was a very strange sight, as it happened accidentally. Next, the skeleton tries to attack again, but this time everything turns out exactly the same as the first clay, just quickly avoiding the monster's swing attack. But this time, he does it from top to bottom as a result of that attack. Claws calmly rolls from one side to the other as a result of this provocative action. The monster starts to lose patience and gets angry because he can't defeat him. Tareen, who notices this, asks why Claws made the monster angry in the first place. At the same time, the skeleton starts appearing around the square, trying to hit Claws with at least one punch, but the man manages to avoid all the attacks again. Tareen is afraid that Claws is already dead, so she squeezes her eyes shut, not wanting to see what could happen to the man she thought she had. It turns into chaos right then and there. In that moment, Claws rises from the dust quickly and lightly steps on the ground, then sweeps the monster like a bullet, holding the whirlwind in his hand. He attacks it hard in the chest. Tareen is speechless because she can't believe that Claws could survive it. She really doesn't understand how Claws managed to make the monster angry. After that, he is tempted to attack the girl on a large scale. Still not knowing what the man will do with the shovel and whirlwind he holds in his hands, all these attacks happen at the same time. Claws, deaf to the world, drops the shovel into the ground. Immediately after that, he pushed off with a shovel and flew forward with a quick swing, wielding a sharp whirlwind in an instant. Claws was behind the monster who didn't even have time to react to the man's maneuver. Claws severely injured the monster with just the whirlwind and his own strength with speed. Tareen stared at him with her mouth agape, shocked. She knelt down slightly and watched the battle unfold right in front of her. Suddenly, the monster's helmet fell to the ground, making a clanging sound as the metal made contact with the surface. After the confident attack, Claws landed on his feet while the monster continued to stand behind him in a strange manner. At that moment, the monster's skull, which had been motionless behind, suddenly cracked. It didn't split, but rather cracked and spread throughout its entire body. Tareen watched the battle with confusion, unable to utter a word. She didn't quite understand what Claws had done to cause such damage to the skeleton-like monster. In the next moment, the monster slowly turned around to look at the man. The monster itself exploded in anger at the way he had injured it so badly that steam came out. The evil monster ran forward with the desire to finally defeat the annoying man, but he just sat motionless on the ground after the final attack. The skeleton swung its weapon from side to side, burning with its own anger as it approached the man who had started attacking him with all his might. Meanwhile, Claws moved in all directions calmly, avoiding every attack as if it were nothing. The skeleton didn't stop swinging its weapon for a moment, but Claws dodged the enemy's attack so easily and quickly that the monster couldn't catch the man with anything. Suddenly, Claws spun fast and neatly, so fast that even his cloak couldn't keep up with his speed alone. The monster trying to do the same was defeated after the man accelerated to the speed he needed, attacking the monster with his whirlwind that hit the spine and arms, causing it to drop its sword and protect itself. This graceful move brought disaster to the surprised skeleton, who was shocked by such an attack this time. Tareen sat quietly on the floor and watched in amazement as the skeleton slowly died after this attack. The monster began to fall to the ground in a hurry while Claws threw a shovel to the ground, sticking it into the earth so he could stand up, the handle of the shovel like a feathered lamp. Shocked by what she saw, 
Tareen stared at Claus, unable to say a word. There was a complex emotion on her face, and she could only surrender to understanding, holding a dagger in her hand, trying to figure out what she had just seen. At that moment, Claus, still under the influence of his combat skills, automatically landed on the shovel, holding the dagger in one hand and the whirlwind in the other. Tareen looked at Claus and wondered what kind of man he was. After a few moments, loud shouts related to the question were already heard in the guild building held by Tareen, the receptionist, while his foot had already made a large crack in the floor. Claus now looked at the girl, unsure of what to say to her. The shocked girl couldn't believe her eyes. Right in front of her, neatly wrapped in a small piece of cloth, was the ghost stone. She stared intently at it and asked if the ghost stone was really there in front of her. Her shout was so loud that everyone in the guild building at that time turned their attention to them. The atmosphere became tense as they listened to what she had to say. The girl tried to say how big the stone was, but she almost covered her mouth with her hand and repeated her words, saying that she was too loud. People would surely ask questions as expected. Many wizards immediately sat in the hall, diverting their attention when they heard the mention of the glowing stone like their ghost. They all turned their gaze to the two of them. The people at the reception desk awkwardly fell silent, thinking it was some kind of mistake. The girl didn't stop smiling while staring closely, silently asking if Claus knew the value of the item she brought to the table. Without letting go of his poker face, Claus awkwardly laughed and said it seemed like he had done something again. Tareen looked at him and said, seeing that he was tired, it would be better for him to keep quiet. The girl stared at Claus intently, mentally asking the man if he knew what she desperately wanted to ask him. Claus awkwardly turned away and muttered that he must have known. But there was something else that prevented him from continuing. He had thrown his face carefully, anticipating that they would start asking questions again. Claus hated it with all his heart, because that was the place where the people who scared him. Suddenly felt the atmosphere in the room heavier, and the door behind Tareen slowly opened. Fear and horror began to emerge behind him for the closing of the guild. And Mrs. Salazar stood outside the door and secretly watched everything happen at the reception desk. She held the door with her metal hand, and she truly smiled frighteningly at the same time. Mrs. Salazar reached out her hand outside the door and slowly squeezed it, then pulled out her index finger and slowly beckoned him closer. She only used hand gestures at the moment when the girls working at the registration desk turned pale. Mrs. Salazar shouted loudly for Claus to continue. At that moment, her face became stern, and her gaze dropped from top to bottom. Seeing such a picture, Claus was very sad, scared, and screamed all that blood. The man had run out of energy from his face and he turned pale. His pupils began to tremble and sweat began to pour from him like a river. After a few moments, the image had already happened in the past. Madame Salazar sat across from Claus on the small sofa, while Tareen stood behind her in a tight uniform. Claus nervously folded his hands and looked down at the floor in fear, then glanced up at the same time. Madame Salazar smiled menacingly and asked where Claus could find rare minerals like this. Tareen silently watched Claus examine the stone, analyzing what was happening. Claus awkwardly laughed and stated that he stumbled upon it completely by accident. Madame Salazar got angry and impatiently asked Claus where exactly he got the stone from. The aggression in her voice was almost palpable as both girls questioned if he had mined this ghostly glowing stone of such a large size at the location called Twilight Mine. When he mined other minerals for the task he had taken, Claus agreed. After that, he said it was truly accidental. The girls laughed incredulously, repeating the absurdity Claus said about Twilight being mine. Unbelievable, they said in unison. Madame Salazar took a deep breath, then took out her magnifying glasses and brought them closer to her eyes. Madame Salazar asked Claus if he knew how much the stone cost. He turned around to try to say something, but then he changed his words and said that this ghost stone was very big. Claus didn't quite understand the woman's words. So he asked if a stone like that was worth about one gold coin. 
Madame Salazar quietly polished her monocle and began muttering something about how this ghost stone should be attached to the archmage's staff. After that, she asked if that was confirmed by the girl's words. Madame Salazar looked down and said that the amount was very small. The stone could be compared to a pinky finger. Claus didn't quite understand what she was talking about, so Salazar asked because she was interested in whether Claus knew about the unusual legend. It was a pictorial legend about a great magician who followed a brave man from a certain country who had defeated an evil dragon. Claus said he had heard of it. He said that this story was a historical fact, but the stone that was attached to the end of the great magician's staff was a very expensive stone. This stone was the ghost stone, which was the size of a large fist at that time. Claus smiled foolishly, and then he saw the glowing ghost stone right in front of him. It was on a neatly folded cloth. He started to get nervous. He raised his hand and clenched it. He couldn't stop smiling as all these thoughts floated in his head at that moment. But he couldn't say anything. Instead, he looked at his fist and then turned to look at the shining stone. After that, he looked at his hand again and started trembling because he realized that this stone was as big as Salazar's clenched fist. He exclaimed loudly that the shining stone was like a ghost that Claus found and brought to the guild's national treasure class. After hearing this statement, Claus panicked and shouted loudly out of surprise, and some others were afraid. It was only at this moment that the man realized what he had brought and felt guilty. He also understood the reason for the girl's anger towards Mrs. Salazar. In silence, he shouted loudly, asking if this was relevant to the national level class here, in their country. The woman said that if they were to convert all of this into gold coins, it would come out to at least 600 gold coins at retail price. Claus shouted loudly, unable to believe what he had just heard. Madame Salazar said that there might be thousands, maybe around 2,000 gold coins on the table in front of them, among everything else. She said that this shining ghost stone was able to enhance the magical powers of the wizards. The shining ghost stone usually used that magic several times stronger than Claus, who was shocked and trembling. He couldn't believe the amount of gold coins named by Mrs. Salazar. Madame Salazar shook her head and satisfiedly stated that this was exactly the reaction she wanted to see initially. However, she turned out to be more than that. Mrs. Salazar, who is talkative, placed a small tray with a large amount of gold coins on the chairman's table. The chairman of the Federation said that if he bought this bright stone ghost from the guild, the wholesale price alone would be 100 gold coins. The sight of this money was astonishing to him. He couldn't take his eyes off the large sum of money lying on the plate in front of him, like a gift from God. He only knew that 100 gold coins were far from small. Claus knew that 100 gold pieces were many times more than what a mandre was paid, which was only 65 gold pieces. He realized that it was indeed 100,000 in terms of black bread, an amount that could be freely used and worked for several years to come. Suddenly, Mrs. Salazar asked if it could be done. Claus wanted to buy the magic stone with this money. This time, Tareen placed a small box in front of him with five large magical stones worth 100 gold coins. Claus looked in amazement at the stones lying right inside it in front of him. At that moment, Tareen calmly held the box in front of Claus, patiently waiting for his decision. The stones Sean closed at least the money lying on the other side of him with a heavy burden on his soul. Claus raised his hand to make the final choice in this difficult matter. At the same time, Mrs. Salazar stirred the atmosphere, asking what Claus should do to overcome all his greed and desires and live well. Claus clenched his fist with great effort, heading towards the big magic stone that would make him stronger. Mrs. Salazar smiled significantly. Claus stubbornly moved upwards and asked if this was the case. Then he himself said that he thought it was simple. Tareen, who was still extraordinary, had not seen it yet. But he took stock and said it was thanks to the purchase of that magical stone. He would also make his own and contribute a small amount to this work from the extraordinary fellowship chairman. He said that if Claus took too many magical elements from this magical stone in a short time, there was a high chance of an explosion so he had to be careful. Claus exclaimed in amazement, 
asking if this was really the case. It was already night outside and the streetlights were on. Finally, Mrs. Salazar and Tareen drove Claus away so he could go home because they didn't trust the man. He still didn't quite understand exactly what had happened. When Claus was still in the middle of his conversation with Mrs. Salazar and Tareen, the girls inquired if the man was alone. He explained that everything had occurred completely by chance. Claus mentioned that if there hadn't been another adventurer at an intermediate level present, he wouldn't have been alive at that moment. The Federation's chairman then asked about the fate of the ferry after the incident, prompting Claus to recall the day's events. He recounted how their battle with the undead knight concluded with a successful strike to the monster's head, splitting its skull and piercing the small mass inside. With only six seconds left on the timer, Claus stood frozen until a sudden explosion erupted from behind him, originating from the monster's skull, which eerily resembled a skull itself. There was only one second left on the timer when Claus stood in place, disappearing into the cloud of dust that appeared after the explosion at the end of the timer. Claus slowly opened his eyes and looked at the floor in silence when suddenly a terrible pain was heard all over the man's body, which made him terrified and coughed up blood in shock. With that unexpected pain, the man fell to the ground and screamed loudly while Claus rolled on the floor, wanting to do something about the pain and wondering if there was at least one intact bone left in his body. Tareen calmly walked towards the helpless man with slow and confident steps, the girl's unknown staff in Claus's mouth. The unfortunate man asked what he had done. After that, he suggested that it might be a low-ranking potion. He asked if Tareen had anything other than these medicines. Without losing her composure, Tareen handed the man a slightly larger bottle than hers. She asked if he had really decided to die in this place like this. The man was surprised by Tareen's attitude and said that such a potion could cost about one gold coin. He asked if she was serious. The girl asked what he was talking about and then said that adventurers should be more careful. The man awkwardly drank the potion. He said he didn't know anything about it because he really didn't know. After all, he knew that most adventurers had low levels and abilities. After that, he fell silent and continued to drink his medicine. Suddenly, Claus remembered something and decided to ask Tareen if the girl had an average level of ability. The girl proudly confirmed this information. After that, she added that it could be said that she was a veteran who was targeted. The girl hesitantly asked what was inside it and if it could be done by a veteran. She also mentioned that she had forgotten about being in such an underground prison. She added that they were still beginners in a rarely visited area. At that moment, Tareen remembered that she was actually on a reconnaissance mission. She said she completely forgot that she was supposed to meet someone there. Surprised, Claus asked her what kind of meeting could be scheduled in a place like that. In the blink of an eye, the girl ran away from there, saying that she needed to run. In the end, the girl said that she could thank him later at Madame Salazar's office. The guild master and Tareen waited anxiously for someone to break the silence in the room. Next, Tareen sank into the ground and lowered her head. Tareen looked at the one-eyed girl while Nye Salazar asked, not pleased, if Tareen wanted to tell her anything she saw. Tareen felt guilty on the floor. Without looking at the girl, Madame Salazar said that they had high hopes for that elf. Tareen started apologizing for her mistakes during the reconnaissance mission. She looked at the floor and said there was no excuse for her behavior but added that the man acted strangely and suspiciously. After that, during this scary mission, a skeleton appeared. Madame Salazar looked out the window. The guild leader ordered Tareen to tell her what she should have done in that situation. The observed object paid attention to her after hearing Tareen. She apologized loudly and felt guilty for her mistakes again. Madame Salazar said that luckily everything went well. She added that with Tareen's help, Claus's life was saved. Hearing this, Tareen felt a little awkward. Madame Salazar said that this time she would let herself turn a blind eye to such things, but next time Tareen wouldn't be able to avoid the consequences of such a serious mistake on the mission. After Madame Salazar finished scolding, Tareen lifted her gaze and looked anxiously at her guild leader. The guild leader noticed Madame Salazar and asked if there was anything left. 
Tareen awkwardly and slowly turned to the guild leader and told her that the incident didn't happen exactly as they imagined. Tareen looked at the floor and said that she hadn't defeated yet. After that, there was a moment of silence in the room. Madame Salazar's stern expression finally changed. The girl shook her head and said that she didn't quite understand what this intermediate-level adventure meant. Madame Salazar asked if Tareen's intention was to do all the main damage to the monster, but her level was low. The adventurer Claus interrupted her, closing his eyes and saying it wasn't like that. He frowned and grimaced. Tareen tried to find the right words to explain that she definitely wanted to help Claus, but the outcome was surprising even to herself. The girl remembered the main event that happened that day on the battlefield. Claus held his wand impressively in his hand while the monster tried to attack him from behind at close range. He dodged the attack skillfully, provoking the monster at the same time. The monster's skeleton was exposed, and Claus swiftly charged at it with his large, sharp sword, avoiding the attack after an unusual dodge maneuver. Claus used the shovel on his foot to lift it along with his foot, then he hit the monster's head with it. After that, he made a second strike with the same shovel, but this time he hit it from bottom to top. After the unusual incident and a series of attacks by Claus, he pierced the monster's spine with a bone spear in the neck area while using the shovel to move it. Finally, he killed the monster with the tip of his terran. It was the end. Claus was able to defeat the monster alone, while the girl herself was confused because she had already overcome it. Mrs. Salazar stared at the girl who entered in disbelief. Then she turned away from her and said from the window that she regretted believing in Tareen. The elf rushed forward and exclaimed that it was the truth, and she wasn't lying. She couldn't exactly say how it happened, but Claus definitely did it himself at that time. Tareen was talking to the girl who approached them, and Mrs. Salazar asked if Tareen claimed that Claus really managed to defeat the medium-level monster alone. Tareen exclaimed that it was true at that time. Tareen was reading some documents and was surprised. The girl turned to the guild guru and said that this was not the case and everything was a bit wrong. At one point, all the attention in the room became focused on Tareen. The girl said that she now had in her hands a list of items that Claus brought, and if you believe this calculation, the monster he defeated was a high-ranking general's skeleton. Tareen may not be able to defeat it alone, but even with the help of low-level people this time. Madame Salazar and Tareen stood around the unfortunate Tareen. They asked the girl if she wanted to tell them more about what happened in the underground prison. Tareen shouted that it would be difficult because she herself did not quite understand what happened that day. In the work diary entry for a certain month and day, the author Tareen wrote about Claus Nall, a collector who belonged to a certain guild in the location of the Misty Forest, which was intended for beginners to fight monsters because they were low-ranked there. They needed to collect some things, according to the drop list report. Some of the things that fell out were 200 ordinary goblin ears, 24 goblin leader ears, 5 goblin leader ears, and also 1 hobgoblin ear. In the same location, they needed to obtain 389 ordinary kobold fangs, 22 soldier kobold fangs, and 7 biz kobold fangs. There were also 21 pieces of green slime core fragments, and a small trench chute was just one part of the various loot belonging to the monsters. They also collected old daggers held by goblins, short old kobold axes, old spears, old clubs, and rough clubs where the boss fell. A small red stone magic shield, small blue stone, small green stone, and yellow and rainbow stones were also among the loot. That day, when Claus came and brought everything at once to the guild, the workers were amazed that she managed to do it, bringing everything in such quantities. They were angry with her. The girl who made her inventory was also shocked when she tried to keep smiling and hold back her emotions. Her handwriting broke in her hands after she handed over all the Claus items. This could bring good profits. Exchange 26 slot coins for 130 silver and 70 bronze, and this will result in a lot of money. Claus happily threw his belongings back and scratched his head while smiling. In general, the man was happy to do it, and succeeded in enriching himself. He tried not to show that it was all due to his skills. Such an amazing reaction. 
The federal staff had to work harder than one day on so many extracted resources that the girls controlled cruelly themselves so as not to bring themselves to hysteria. The class had already said it was a few days after the automation skill resurgence. Her routine had changed a lot. The girls at the counter saw the man again and said that he brought a lot of items that the girl tried to hold back. The flow of these objects decided to ask the young man again. He said that if he thought about it, it would be difficult for him to bring everything alone. Plaus, who was in a good mood, raised his thumb and showed it to the girl with a big smile, saying that it was easy for him and everything was fine. The girls behind started screaming and shedding tears. This guy has added a lot of workloads for them this time, and now they have to work day and night. Claus continues to act like this, desperate as if he doesn't understand anything, only smiling at those who have cursed him for such service. The drop list looks like this. 253 goblin parts, 418 kobolds, 21 slime, 1 trent, as well as 178 pieces of equipment and 164 pieces of magical stones. The girls think that their work is not appreciated, but they are very aware that they cannot stop him from killing monsters because they don't have the right to do so. Claus throws back his coin purse and walks proudly towards the exit, deaf to their pleas. The guy still has a lot of work to do today, smiling as he thinks about it. After he is able to master his skills and understand how to succeed, it becomes very easy for him to do everything on his own. He thinks the same way. He wants to test himself again, what happened in the last battle when the automation skill had to be activated repeatedly, but the risk was still too high. Then Claus only managed to defeat one high-ranking monster. But what if this time there will be several of them or different types of enemies? In any case, he needs to check everything so that Claus can soon find himself back in the misty forest, which is full of enemies for beginner adventurers. At that time, the adventurer called Klaus Noldor was at level 38. The level 38 men stood proudly with their hands on their hips and declared that he had finally arrived at the best place to check the fourth level of automation, even automatic battles. If the man couldn't handle it, there was no dangerous enemy for him here because he knew this area like the back of his hand. So far, no one was in front of him, and the man stood alone in the middle of the forest. He decided to activate his skills and immediately set his time limit that restricted his abilities. He started to move, and the simple yet amazing results were that he stood with his weapon raised, surrounded by a group of defeated enemies of different races and classes. On that day, all the monsters from the misty forest were destroyed wherever they were. Apparently, his skills truly chased everyone, not giving them a chance to escape. Claus was very pleased to realize that he had no scratches on him. He closed his eyes, and when he opened them, he thought that his strength would be able to recover. The man smiled broadly and quietly told himself that after a while, even after the destruction that would still happen to those monsters, they would be born again and flood the forest once more. Claus continued to stay in the misty forest. The man had used this technique for the tenth time and each time successfully killed everyone in his path automatically. Fighting was a skill more extraordinary than Claus had anticipated. Now, the man could easily defeat anyone weaker or even stronger than him. Claus closed his eyes and bowed his head, indicating that the cooldown and inability to choose a target to attack still remained. This technique had its weaknesses, but it could be said that the cooldown or skill recharge limitation was the time needed to fully recover. Only after that could his abilities be used again. Claus opened his eyes, surveying the battlefield, realizing that he couldn't keep his abilities active all the time. However, this didn't make him weak at all. Claus just needed a short time to recover. That's when his skills were frozen before he could use any of them again. Therefore, even though the man used automatic resource gathering functions, for example, after the appearance of enemies, the interception function automatically worked. After that, Claus thought that no, he couldn't do it. Of course, he could use his function, also known as making legs, but it was limited to cooling down the others. The disadvantage was the inability to choose a target. As far as the man remembered, he used the automatic combat function. 
You could face an enemy you had fought before, or you could stumble upon someone you had never met. The time when the skeleton army general appeared in front of him, but for some reason, the result was already known to him. To meet all these conditions for the operation of this automatic combat technique, you needed to attack at least one blow that would cause some damage, even in small amounts. The man knew that well. If he could win thanks to this, he would definitely have an ace up his sleeve. In this case, Claus would be able to fight to be at the top in the world.